Hi there, folks. Now, there's been some interest in me explaining uh, the circuitry behind my Arduino-powered uh, arc reactor, uh, specifically how I achieve the uh, flickering effects and the uh, variable brightness um, LEDs. Um, so, first off, I'll say that I do not use the PWM output of the Arduino um, for most of the LEDs. For some of the LEDs, like the center ring, I use PWM. But for the outer ring, I use uh, a different type of uh, digital to analog conversion um, and this is made as in the crappy of a way as possible to achieve the flickering and it's actually a pretty simple circuit um, it takes a resistor, a capacitor and uh, a, an operational amplifier and a transistor and it takes two uh, Arduino pins per channel, per digital, or sorry, per analog output channel uh, one analog pin and one uh, digital pin um, and now I'll explain how it works uh, piece by piece. I should probably point out that the entire reason that I'm going to these lengths to get these uh, analog outputs is because, well, A, the Arduino only has a couple um, PWM outputs. Um, I need four for all my segments that I want to do. Um, and I was thinking to myself, you know, there's five analog inputs. How can I use those five inputs to my advantage there? Um, so that's one reason. And the other reason is that I want to get a flickering effect without having to worry about doing a flicker in software. Oh, and uh, by the way, I'm sort of aiming these discussions to the uh, electronics hobbyist that's just sort of starting out. Um, if you're you know, already good at electronics, you're probably going to find this very kind of boring and redundant. Uh, sorry about that. If you want to just skim the details, um, go to my uh, blog post. Um, which I will post on the description as soon as I write it, um, and you can just kind of get the overview there. Uh, it's not a complicated circuit, as I said. There's just a few components. Now, the first step in all this is to actually get the Arduino to give us an analog voltage, because as we know, the uh, Arduino is a digital device, uh, and it can only output zero volts or uh, the supply voltage of the Arduino chip, or the uh, 80Mega328P, probably. So, in order to do that, we use an RC circuit. Let me explain. And Alrighty. So, RC, resistor, about 22K in this example. C, capacitor, about 47 microfarads in this, in this uh, example. Get rid of some of these extra parts that I'm going to use later. And before I can explain why I even am bothering with this type of circuit, I have to show you what its effect is. So, I have my handy dandy. Uh, oscilloscope and uh, add some switches. So here I am connecting one switch to ground. Oops, move it over a little bit for room. And then another switch to supply. You can see it over there. And then the uh, end of the capacitor is connected to ground. And attach my probe here to the uh, leg of the capacitor that's not connected to ground and then power it on. I'm just using Arduino here as a uh, convenient USB power supply. So here we go. Now watch what happens to the voltage uh, as I hit the switch to the pushing the connection to VCC and there you go. You can see that the voltage rose, but slowly. And actually, if I use this handy-dandy measuring tool, we can see that it took, oh, about, you know, maybe 0.8 seconds to reach most of the way to, to VCC. I know you can't tell the dot. There's my little measuring dot. And then there's my other measuring dot. And now look what happens if I reconfigure the scope to look at the down, uh, down curve, and I push the uh, other button connecting to VSS. As you can see, voltage decreases, but slowly. Now, how could this be useful? Well, if we could have an Arduino say, hmm, I'm interested in the capacitor being exactly this voltage, we can hook up the Arduino analog pin to read the output voltage here, and then act as both of these switches. 
So when the voltage here is too low, close this switch and then wait until the charge in the capacitor is at the correct voltage. If the voltage in the capacitor is too high, act as this switch and discharge the capacitor slowly until it reaches your desired voltage. If the voltage is okay, then configure the pin as an input, which means that it will have basically no effects on the voltage uh, and the capacitor because it will become, uh, it will be put in a high impedance mode. All right, so I removed the switches uh, and now I'm going to wire up the circuit. So I'm going to connect the uh, resistor to uh, digital pin 13, which happens to be the LED. It'll be cool to see it in action later. And I'm going to hook up uh, the capacitor to analog pin 0 so that we can read the state of the uh, circuitry. Now I just need to write some software um, to drive this thing. Here's our program real quick. Here's our pin definitions. Um, here's our desired uh, analog reading, so our desired analog output. Uh, 512 here means 2.5 volts because we're supplying our Arduino with 5 volts in this example nothing in the setup and here's where the meat happens so first we set our digital pin as an output then while the uh, analog reading at the output is too high write a zero to the uh, digital pin then while the analog reading is too low write a uh, high to the digital pin then configure the digital pin as an input so it has no more effect on the circuit and then kind of approximate doing some more so here's the thing running. The bottom trace is just ground for convenience. The top trace is uh, the analog output. As you can see, well, there's one volt per div, and it's most of the way to uh, two and a half volts. As you'll see, the top of that little blurry line um, is at really close to two and a half volts while there's a, there's a fuzziness there and if we speed up the, uh, the trace here well it's hard to see in the camera but it's basically oscillating let's see if I can clear it up you can see it a bit better as you can see it's bouncing up and down because after it's done all the processing there's a delay of you know 10 milliseconds um, which then causes the capacitor to discharge a little bit before the uh, software can get back to uh, refreshing the voltage on the now this is part of the reason why I get my flicker. Um, sometimes my software takes a little bit to process. Um, this is kind of intentional. Uh, so there's a momentary little blip in the output. So to demonstrate this, I've changed it to one millisecond. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of bouncing going wrong. Um, the voltage isn't very stable because there's just too much time between updates. Space things up a bit. I've hooked up this potentiometer to uh, analog pin one and modified the program to read the de desired voltage from analog pin one. So we kind of have a voltage follower. And here we go. I can twist this guy, and uh, as you can see, the dots going higher and lower. So I'm choosing a different voltage. Turn it all the way up. Turn it back down. Whoa! What's going on? it's not going back down. I'm turning this thing all the way, back and forth, and it's not going down. Why is this? Well, as it turns out, there's a bug here that I ran into when developing this. Um, so as it turns out, um, all capacitors have some sort of leakage, and if you're trying to charge this all the way to 5 volts through a resistor, you won't actually get to 5 volts. So what happens is your analog read here, your desired voltage, is all the way to 1024, so 5 volts, and then you get down here. Well, your analog reading is never going to become uh, at least this desired voltage, so you're going to be stuck here forever trying to charge your capacitor. Now there's a few ways around this. Um, you can either limit like by experimentation find out what the absolute maximum that your uh, capacitor will charge to and just kind of say uh, kind of 
limit the desired voltage to that number. This is not a very good idea because things like temperature and maybe battery voltage and things like that can affect your uh, your values there. Or uh, you can do what I did and just kind of limit the number of iterations that these loops can do. So have a counter that gets reset to zero at the beginning of each loop, and if it and add one to that counter on every iteration, and if it exceeds some value. Um, it's up to you, you know, decide when enough is enough, and just kind of terminate. I've done that now, so you have the iteration variable. So let's try this out. Let's also reduce the delay so we get a smoother output. Get some uploading. Do -do -do. And let's crank this sucker. Cranking it up all the way to max, and there we go, going back down, whoops, moving that, there we go, so that problem is solved. Now this is all well and good, you might say, uh, but what, how can I hook this up to an LED and get, you know, a variable LED brightness? Can I just hook it up to here? Well, I'll open this. So here I've hooked an LED through a resistor to the, uh, like, of the capacitor where we have our output. Now I'm going to turn up the brightness all the way. Oh, nothing's happening. Well, let's look at the oscilloscope. Turning up the brightness, here it is all the way. Well, the problem is that we're trying to light basically this LED through this resistor, this resistor, and the LED itself. Um, that's not going to work because the LED um, cannot be lit through this 22 you know, kilo ohm resistor. The resistance is just too high, so not enough current would flow to the LED. And the capacitor might be charging, but as soon as you hook up this LED, it's going to discharge almost instantaneously. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to avoid this problem.